In this video I'm going to talk about porting Z80 code from the Spectrum Next to the ZX81. My original game Caverns was first developed on the ZX81. It was around 16k of Z80 code. And while the gameplay was pretty much finished, I started to run out of space on the, in the 16k when I was adding the menu screens. So it was never quite completed. The original code was lost and the tape stopped working. But around in 1995, I decided to see if I could rebuild the game in Ball and Delphi using Object Pascal. I was able to do this and developed and develop the game so it could be viewed on PC, submitting it to the Retro Remax website so that community could look at it. Around five years ago, I was learning TypeScript, developing software for the web. By this time, the Delphi game was starting to look a bit long in the tooth, so I thought I'd redevelop Caverns in TypeScript. With the announcement of the Spectrum Next, I thought it would be a good thing to get the game running on a Sinclair computer. I was a backer of the issue 2 of the Spectrum Next, and I'm currently working on getting Caverns running on, on the Spectrum Next as a project to work on with the Next. Completing the circle, I'm hoping to port the Z80 code that I've written on the Next back to the ZX81 so it can be played on the original hardware. Over the last few months I've been working on the sprites for the game. Um, I thought for a bit of a change I would see how easy it was to port the code that I'd written on, on the Next so far to the ZX81. Developing on the Next I was using C-Spec with the SJSM Plus assembler. For the ZX81 I would use the A21 emulator and FASMW ZX assembler. While the assembler for both these was likely to be similar. I wanted to see if this, if this was the case before I went on to develop any more code on the, on the Next. When the Next arrives, I'll be able to test both the Next version and the ZX81 version using the ZX81 emulator built into the Next. So looking at the, the code that I developed for the Next, the, the first file that I would need to convert was caverns.asm, which runs the program the import binaries, which imports in the screens, the, the print.asm file, which outputs to the screen, the random.asm file, which gives a random number, and the menu loop.asm, which handles input to show the different menu screens. The random.asm was the easiest file to convert. I took out the routine that I was using for the next and replaced it simply by some code that looks at the frames variable on the ZX81 in 16436 in memory. So that was quite easy. The routine to read the keys from the keyboard on the ZX81 was quite simple. I took out the next code that I'd written and I called the ZX81 run routine 699. Then comparing the value that this returns to two byte numbers to decide which menu screens to, dis to display. See this in check menu keyboard. The changes to the print.asm file were the most major and, and I stripped out the spectrum next routine which holds um, a representation of the screen in memory. Took this out and directly accessed the ZX81 screen held in memory, reference to in 16396. So I re rewrote the get the get at routine, which gets which character is at a certain x and y position, returning the character in the error register. Rewrote the print out routine, doing something similar to get the location and then overwriting my character if it wasn't a one one eight character, which is a new line character. So writing in the ZX81 character into the location. When I hooked all this code together. I found that um, using the print at routine to display the screens was quite slow. So I used um, a routine that I developed two years ago in the A21 emulator quick print screen, which displays the game screens quite, uh, much more quickly. So the changes to the print.asm routines were much more major than the other, than the other changes I needed to make. And uh, I needed to do some optimization on the print at writing a routine that multiplied by 33 to get the y position 
from a table rather than using the multiply routine that I, that I used on the next. So hooking all this code together, I was able to run it in the, emulate, in the 81 emulator, going through the different screens. And I could see that the move list work, code worked okay, which hadn't required much many changes. The code to trigger the different icicles um, was running quite slowly. Um, and the game, and this code, I think will need some further optimization for the Z81. When I take that code out, you can see that the lifts run very quickly. So the lifts themselves won't need any optimization. But the code that scans through looking for cross characters and the inverted X characters will need some optimization in the final version. But by now I'd added the lifts.asm to the ZX81 code, the drop blocks and the drop icicles and the activate icicles.asml code was added as well. The lift code um, le needed very little changes, which is promising. The drop blocks and drop, si drop icicles will need some optimization, and also the activate icicle.asm will need optimization. I think I'm going to use the CPDR instruction to do this. So looking at lifts.asm, see that I only had to actually make one change, looking at it beyond compare. This was with the add e instruction, where I needed to use add a comma e to do the same thing. So there's a slight difference there in the compilers. My general impression is that c spect will be the easier tool to continue working on the code with, as it has better debugging. Um, so I'm going to carry on working on the code in the on the next platform with a final port back to the ZX81 at the end. So in conclusion, I spent less than a day um, porting to the ZX81, the code that I'd done. Most of it was fairly straightforward. I'd expected to need to rework the print, the get routine, and the random routines, which I did have to do. Um, I didn't expect to have to do as much optimization on the print routine, uh, but now that's done. Things should move forward quite quickly. And the other thing that I've noticed is the next emulator is running much quicker than the ZX81 emulator. So that might mean I need to do further optimization as I continue. So in the next episode, I'll get back to working on the sprites, hopefully finishing off the bridges and then moving on to the next piece of functionality.